Let's see. Okay. Just checking some things on Discord. Make sure that's all set up. Oh, nope. Maybe not. Uh, you gave lab meeting today, so you're fried. Yeah, I bet. Like real lab meeting, right? Or or was it like a small? I'm assuming it wasn't round table or something like that. That's what I mean. Oh wow, Samuel animates and cyanophyte both also just went live. Busy day, busy day. Uh, oh, then you got some fries. <laughs> also, hello. Uh, not bad, pretty boring day, but boring is better than bad, so you'll take it. That's fair. Yeah, I had a really busy day, but that busy day ultimately meant I got some good results, which is great. But not, I mean, this won't mean much unless you've done it, but I was doing a new molecular cloning protocol, which is kind of weird kind of crazy hold on actually i want to pull it up because it's not new golden gate cloning it's not a new type of uh oh come on there we go it's not a new type of cloning by any means but we were just kind of like turned on to it and we realized that it like is boo. fantastic <laughs> boo cloning <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Twitch guy, too. Welcome. Uh, yeah, it's called Golden Gate Assembly. It's where you use these crazy restriction enzymes. They're not crazy, but these restriction enzymes. Give me a picture. That cut f away from their recognition site. So you can basically, apparently, assemble together many, 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 many inserts. Oh. I still ha don't have my promised uh, sound associated with the uh, Star Trek one. I want to have a whoosh as it goes by, but I've been busy. I haven't had time. Uh, but hello, Benjamin. Oh, you thought it was going to be a scary boo, not a not a that's a bad thing boo. I see, I see. Yeah, I guess that is confusing. Um, uh, maybe I can change that one. What does that even say? Did I jump scare you? Yeah, I bet I did. You coward. You make me sick. Your weakness is pathetic. Thank you, Brian and Menegard, for simultaneously redeeming that. Oh my gosh. That did scare me. Huh. Um, is the channel reward thing not popping up? That's the, well, you got your way then. Yeah, he's pretty funny. I don't watch, I don't watch him very much, like not, not regularly. Yeah, now I'm awake, exactly. Yeah, you decided to demonstrate the jump scare simultaneously. I wonder if there's, does Twitch keep time codes? I don't think so. I can't even see a time code on those. Um, rewards, rewards, rewards. Because I had tried out the channel point, like, community thing. Manage rewards and challenges. Oh, yeah. That's still there. Okay. Great. Go back to that. Okay. Awesome. You already marked them as done? I didn't know you could mark rewards done. Yeah, within seconds. Okay. So, I had a very, very busy day and couldn't prepare what I wanted to prepare. So I just thought today would just be a free-for-all. We can talk about some things that came up in in uh, the uh, Discord. 
and look at some protein structures because that can always be fun and just kind of see where we go from there basically I did have an actual plan but you know that kind of got dashed when I left work three hours after I meant to so that's unfortunate um, every time someone redeems a reward and you do it like it activates you've been marking them as complete so you don't have a notification bubble oh I see okay huh interesting well whatever I mean there is a community reward thing that's that should be there but if it's not visible eh, we'll figure it out okay yeah yeah so we have these uh yeah telephone cords you know I never actually noticed you're right, they are telephone cords. They, This has eluded me um, that, uh, oh yeah, there it is, it's still there. Um, I feel like I've, since I first saw these structures, or like this this way we display protein structures, um, I thought they looked like something, and you're absolutely right, they're, uh, they're telephone cords. And I never really put that together. Yeah, so um, in Discord, we were talking very briefly. Uh, David, who hopefully will pop on, he's usually around on, on Wednesdays. Uh, he was asking about, he had a very specific question and had asked about whether or not, let me find it. Da, da, da. Let's see. Uh, what if current day HIV had been a thing during the very very early days of Homo sapiens? Would the species have died out or would it have developed some kind of resistance? Very good question. And then um, Bran took a crack at answering, gave a, a, a good uh, answer, but I think he made it clear that he was missing some information. Um, but uh, the piece of information he was missing was that, yes, uh, the ancestors of humans like all the way in like our just generic mammalian ancestors had been in infected with HIV like asterisk uh, viruses um, to the point where they the signals of them uh, comprise about 8% of our genome. Um, so let's see 8% so 0 0.08 times six one two three one two three one two three so that is 480 million bases approximately of our genome is just old virus old dead bad virus whoops come back here uh your cell phone has no cords <laughs> uh mine doesn't either <laughs> Uh, am I familiar with the game Fold It? Yes, I am. But I have not thought about Fold It for a long time. Uh, and I feel like Fold It was kind of not supplanted. Like, not, not, it's still relevant. Um, but the AI protein folding sort of like pipelines are kind of coming online and getting better and better and better uh but yeah so i have not played folded in a very long time i don't remember how i you know how to play but basically you contribute to science by playing fold it what are you doing you're helping fold uh protein structures so actually i want to look up um chimera x i'm going to open up a a specific program that we can use to actually look at protein structures and we'll look at some of these we'll look at some of these uh, you know coiled um, phone cords and maybe I'll download fold it I, I do not have enough time to uh, get distracted today I had a long day today I have an early morning tomorrow. Got to stay not on topic, but on time. Got to stay on time. All right. 
Let's see, I don't want any of those. Um, we need to find the, the structure here. So um, this program, Chimera X, is free to download for whoever wants to. So let's see, do we want HIV protein or HERV? I think we want HERV. PDB. Let's see, HIV. Oh, actually. Actually, actually. Let's do um, this HIV one. This, this one, which is HIV. Because this HIV contains uh, AZT, which is one of the common um, uh, uh, me medicines, medications that are given to people who are infected with HIV. It's, it, uh, I believe it induces uh, mutations because it, it, the, the retrotransposase or whatever it is, um, isn't very good at integrating like perfectly nucleotides. And AZT is a nucleotide, yeah, here it is, AZT. AZT is a nucleotide um, analog, and so it accidentally picks it up and introduces mutations into itself, which is a tricky way of messing up the, with the, the virus. All right, so I think we just do open this thing, and then it will download. Ah, there we go. I will move things around. So that is our... Oh, AZT resistant HIV-1, reverse transcriptase. Cool. And I hear my cats banging at my door, trying to get my attention. So that's annoying. All right, let's get rid of one of these. Um, e, A, E. P53. Okay, let's uh, hide, hide, hide everything. There we go. Make that bigger so we can see it. How many cats do I have? two but they're very very uh they're very interested in everything that i do so they're angry that they don't get they're not allowed into the room while i'm streaming not for any particular reason i wouldn't mind if they were on stream but if i'm doing something with a microscope i don't want them getting their cat fur and everything everywhere but you know maybe it'd be fun to actually look at some cat fur and human hair or something like that sometime um, anyways, so this, let's, uh, I want to show, select, this will probably actually bring back the other thing. Yeah, it did. So... Uh, mana guard. I, I hate that they're, come on, I'll deselect. There we go. So mana guard, these are those um, same like phone cord like structures that we saw before. So the, the twirly bits, actually I guess I should step back. The, the pink and the blue are both protein. They're two different proteins. Uh, if we were to select one, I thought, yep, if we select one down here in the corner, what has just popped up is the sequence. So the protein sequence, right? So proteins are made of amino acids, all that stuff. That's great. Proteins function in part due to their structure. So structure is very important for a protein. If you don't have a protein that's folded exactly the way it needs to be folded, it probably is not gonna work out for you. Uh, we display uh, 
protein folding as in three different ways. You either get the little squiggly bits of just spaghetti. So that means it's kind of unstructured, so the chain is just kind of wiggling through space. Uh, we get alpha helices, which are the actual phone cord bits. So like this part right here, uh, what that is is a is the, the, the chain of amino acids is, is going through a spiral. So that's ordered. Let's see. We also have beta sheets. There they are. I can't really show them. So the beta sheets are these like arrows that are flat, more or less. Those are, I think they're always anti pair. Well, in this protein, they're always anti parallel from each other. That's when rather than like going in a spiral, we're just kind of going out through space when they're more or less flat. So they go across one way and they come back the other way. So that what we're, that's what we're actually looking at there. And then they, they display also the, the DNA. Let me do that. So the yellow, so DNA is double stranded. So the yellow is just like a more cartoony version of it. The green I made into like the surface volume. So DNA actually has uh, like this, this sort of surface. Life is an incredible artist. Uh, yeah, no, it's um, these, these, all these shapes can be really pretty. Let's select all, we'll hide everything, hide, show. I do like the surface ones the best. I think that they look so bubbly and perfect. I also don't use this pro program often enough. I don't know how to deselect. Yeah, so you can see how this one, like, um, I don't exactly know how this one is functioning, but it kind of, it kind of, you know, grasps onto some DNA right there with um, these two proteins. Now I'm trying to figure out where the azide is, because I thought the azide was in here. Maybe not. To me, that looks like what happens to a box of nerds left in a car for too long uh, in summer. I mean, it might be the colors, but yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, they these So these little like knobby bits, that's the outside of the protein, right? At that point, it's like the electron shell. Um, so this is pretty much, you know, the smallest biological unit that we can really get. And maybe I'm not like clear about this, but like this is real. Like this is as close to a picture of a protein as we can get. So we got these two bits right here. And actually, if you like, uh, yeah, so tiny yet so complex. Exactly. Um, we can actually, I bet I can look up. I do want to get back to fold it because that was a good idea. Um, RSCB PDB. We can go to the protein database and I bet they have an actual just HIV like full um, like uh, what am I trying to say caps it maybe maybe they have that so I don't want that actually although they do have a lot of really cool um, uh, like summary articles like this PDB 101 where they kind of break down things into more simple simple uh, articles and stuff like that I want to search the actual one HIV give me the structure of HIV I'm gonna shop through all these structures I don't use PDB too often so I don't know how to actually tell All beta proteins? HIV virus? V stands for virus, but the thing that blows your mind is how tiny things resemble the large things in the universe. That could have easily been a nebula we were looking at. I wonder if I wonder what the cosmic significance of that is, if any. Well, the the significance is that these things fold using like pretty fundamental mechanisms. Like if I go back to uh Oops, gotta select all again. I want, let's see, I need to figure out the 
just the right sort of view. How do I get? No, no. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it to, there we go. Now I gotta select one thing. So this is an even, this is a more, you know, this gives us more information about that individual structure, like so that you can see the chain that's going through here, but all these little like branches that are coming off are different atoms. In fact, I should probably color by atom. Let me uh, color by, oh, I guess I can't color by atom on this particular one. I'm sure there is a way, whatever, okay. Come on, there we go. Anyways, these are folded and kept together because of interactions between the atoms within this much, much larger molecule. So it's hydrogen bonding, it's the van der Waals forces. Uh, I think there might be some like, uh, what's it called? Someone should correct me on this. Um, ring stacking, I think that can come into play to, in some proteins. Ring stacking, when flat rings kind of hang up next to each other because they're like p orbitals or something like that. I mean, it looks like a mess, but there's a structure and an order to it. I think the difference between this and like the cosmic sort of scale is all the cool stuff in the cosmos is sort of self self sorting on a on a huge scale, so it looks well ordered. Well, this is highly ordered at a very small scale uh, because it's evolved that way. So if you extrude a protein um, as you're making it, if you extrude it the wrong way, you can end up with a completely different structure. Okay, but I was trying to look for the full, full capsid. Maybe that doesn't, that probably exists. I probably just don't know how to find it. Um, yeah. So anyways, about fold it, there's alpha fold, alpha fold. Yeah, so this is through deep mind, I think, is that um, IBM? Maybe that's not IBM. Uh, but we're now beginning to be able to actually predict these, sort of. Um, and the reason why that's really important is because you change like one thing in a protein, it completely changes its its structure and maybe its function. And getting one of these individual structures can take months to years. Lots of people do multiple all at once, but um, you know, it would save a lot of time if we could just we could just uh, predict this. Hello, David. Cheers to you. We were talking about uh, HIV, actually, and protein structures. Um, but I was saying uh, it's interesting because we can actually predict the structure of like RNA because RNA has a structure. But and we've been able to do that for a, a while now. But protein has eluded us because it's so, so, so much more complicated than RNA ever is. I feel like yeah. there's got to be a way for me to. OK. Size? Do I want size? Resolution, not date. Actually, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll sort by the most recent. Maybe someone's done something big. I'll have to just look for capsid too. I also don't want to melt my computer. Whoa. I was actually looking that time so I could see it. Uh, do I know about the, the SETI thing? Or that the thing that SETI did a long time ago 
uh, with processing data using people's idle CPUs. Yes, absolutely. And I, I signed up my family's computer to do that. Um, oh. Thank you for the follow. Arg, I got sucked into Twitch, which is a wonderful username. Top 10 username, probably. It's, it's kind of a mood. Um, also, yeah, Brian, you're just finding single capsid protein structures. There's got to be a full thing somewhere. Um, the thumbnails was a protein. You were click braided into a protein alert. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, we're looking at proteins at the moment. Um, so like right here, you know, almost are you aware of this, by the way? Um, are you aware of Chimera X and just the fact that you can look at protein structure? Because I, I know every time I pull up something, every other time I pull up something cool, uh, you have the great idea of using it in class. So just by the way, this is a free thing you can do if you ever want to look at proteins or even some DNA structures. Um, you were wondering if protein folding would benefit from something similar to that of the SETI program. Um, yeah, so it's weird because it's not, I feel like with SETI, the, the, the thing is that that was a limitation of, of power, right? Um, so util utilizing idle CPUs could sort of do things massively in parallel. The problem with protein folding is that we don't fundamentally understand enough about the forces that are folding these things, or at least we didn't, um, in order to reliably and uh, uh, predict the folding of them, if that makes sense. So it's not like power was a problem. Power is now sort of a problem, but at some point we also just don't know what we're doing. Um, Uh, no, but I know you. You know what you're gonna do with this. They call you protein because you like Gen Z. <laughs> I like Gen Alpha uh, because I showed them the, those Harvard animations, top top notch animations. I know what you're talking about of the electron transport chain, and they commented on all these structures. So you mentioned these databases. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here, just for everybody, I did mention this just now, and in fact, look at this. Um, so in PDB 101, so Protein Database 101, they are sort of educa the education portal of the PDB. They have these wonderful little renderings and, and information on molecules. So they have molecules of the month. And look at that. The electron transport chain, or at least part of it, is the molecule of the month this week, or this month. And they have these beautiful structures. Um, and something I want to also mention, because Manogard, you mentioned it before, there is an art style. What is it called? Oh, good cell, good cell, good cell art. So uh, there's this artist, um, David Goodsell. That's it. He does these um, amazing, amazing illustrations. So he's a scientist and an illustrator. He uses. Please give me a big big picture he uses real data real structures and it has this very cool way of putting it all together and he kind of gives you a scale of what's actually going on in the cell so for example this is the coronavirus at scale right with all the real proteins with as far as we know this you know the general structure of them and he he's so good at showing how crowded everything is in a cell because, you know, when we look at pictures of cells on the inside, they look like kind of big and open, except for, you know, the mitochondria floating through or whatever. But in reality, they're like, and even interstitial space, you know, in our bodies is filled with stuff. Um, so, David, looking at all these knots, it's important what the hell these things actually do. Yeah. Um, oh, and psycho, psychedelic biological art. That's exactly what it looks like. The organic art rabbit hole is going to keep you busy for a few days. Yeah, it's 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 so good here. Good sell. Um, his art is so sort of famous 
that if we go to any one of these, I think this is what we do. And Brian, I did see that you showed me, or you're, you're showing a, uh, or you gave me a structure to look at. I will do that. I think on the PDB, we can go and look at the structure and there's actually like a good cell button somewhere. So like we can view this just online, but I'm pretty sure, where is it? Where is it? We want the polymer. Oh, add representation, cartoon. Ah, there's somewhere there's like a good cell like feature that will just make things kind of look like this. What else does he have? That piece of crap made our politicians go haywire. Exactly. Yeah. Such a small thing. Um, let's see. What else does he have? This also looks like a virus. In fact, it looks like HIV. Oh, yep. Right there. So like this is the capsid on the inside right here. And inside of it is its ribonuclear, um, uh, like like RNA um, uh, genome with a bunch of twists and turns, because that's what RNA likes to do. Some helper proteins in there, some helper proteins on the outside of the capsid. And this is all enveloped in a uh, lipid bilayer, along with some like helper proteins on the outside. These are just so cool. I could look at these all day and I, I think he does a good job at like yeah so here's another one also about coronavirus I guess he's been very busy lately unsurprising although it says insulin action oh yeah yeah so this is exocytosis right so you get these so this is the the blue part is the inside of the cell you've got some what would those be uh, actin filaments maybe Oh uh, wait, no, actin is that one. Microtubules probably coming through here in the green. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there's little walker proteins that are helping uh, these these vesicles walk up and down the microtubules. You can see that in this lighter blue that I'm kind of hovering over. These these vesicles are full of insulin, I think, just based on the title. And they're being, you know, exported outside. And you can see the uh, extracellular space full of these, you know, like scaffolding proteins. Uh, you can't believe you knew it was COVID before you said it. Or I said it. If you're C CS major, you, sh you shouldn't know such things. I think you had a pretty uh, uh, safe bet on that one, but good job. Um, RNA is kind of chaotic. Yeah, RNA is low key cha chaotic. Low key chaotic. Uh, although we just learned in my class that I didn't teach all about the structure of RNA and how, you know, it's, it's, it depends on the situation, but that structure is super important. It does too much, but we're grateful mostly. Oh, um, his gallery on PDB 101 is free for use under the Creative Commons licensing. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, oh. Brian, let's, you, you, you shared with me the, uh, I can just look at these all, oh, here. He looks like someone who would make these. What did you, someone said before? Psycho, psychedelic biological art? He looks like he makes psychedelic biological art. And the thing is, he does. Um, I think what I was thinking about before, though, is I think he has a website with he, where he has, like, some program you can use to make good cell style art digitally. I remember trying it once. It was a little tough to figure out. You know, might as well just try it out. Yeah, he has a gallery in the in PDB 101. Let's look and see. I mean, I mean, yeah, the man is like <laughs> making covers left and right. Oh, look at this beautiful thing. I don't even know what this is. Uh. Where is your, is it cells, art, science, cell space? I swear there is a program you can use 
to kind of mess around with all this. Art, art. Modeling and visualizing the cellular mesoscale. Cool. I'm just skimming. I know he has some sort of thing somewhere about this. If I find it, I'll throw it on Discord. Yeah, I'll share it on Discord if I find it. Okay, but Brian, you sent me. Don't want this. You sent me a PDB code. 3J3Y. Ho oh, oh. ho. Yeah. Okay. Is this going to melt my computer, though? Got to love a man who makes E. coli attractive. At the uh, Art Institute, at wh where I did my um, PhD, there's like a glass E. coli as an art exhibit. I always really like that. Okay. Now, how do I clear this? I know, background white, that might be useful. Clear? Select all, and then delete, delete, no? Maybe I just, oh, uh-oh. Maybe I just quit and open it up, up again. Ooh, cell paint. Yeah, yeah, I'll open cell paint in just a second. First, I want to attempt to melt my computer by loading this, this literal virus onto my computer. I remember, <laughs> do I normally have heating issues? Uh, no, I'm just kind of joking with myself because it's fine, just the fans always whir up to a degree that makes me worry, but it's probably fine. And this is probably gonna make it very angry if I do that. Was it a Luke Jerem glass scul sculpture? Okay, okay, so many things going on at once. Let me, let me open this first. Okay, it's, it's running, uh-oh. Okay, I'll take that opportunity to look up. So pretty. Uh, you said Luke Jeram. Luke Jeram. This looks exactly the style of what I saw. I think it was a Luke Jeram. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll open what you sent, Brian. Oh no, this is what I was talking about. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. I just missed it, apparently. Okay. Oh. Aha. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wow, look at all, so each one of these double letters is a different one of these proteins my computer is revved up wow look at that thing hold on you can't see it very well zoom all the way in oh it's even like low res now that we're looking at it. zoom out you can see all the, the really pretty oscillating oscillating tessellating Pattern. Uh-oh, the stream is having some slideshow moments. Uh-oh. Okay, okay. Will I crash it if I if I color it by chain? Ooh. Oh. How pretty. Okay, I'm gonna close this. Everyone look at it. Wait. 
look at it. I can't. There we go. It's okay. We like PowerPoint. <laughs> I told you my computer was going to melt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone, you can go download this yourself. I'm going to close this now. People can go download that um, if you want. In fact, I'm going to take that, that PDB number that you had before, just so we don't miss it. Now I'm going to put that in, let's call that, is this primary literature? I think it's about primary literature. I'm just going to put that in there just as a record. You're going to play with it tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> Forbidden Fruity Pebbles. That's a good description. All right. Yeah, so um, cell paint is super. Oh, it is. It is a web application. Wait. Physics became unstable and was turned off. Erase or move the faulty object before turning it back on. I did not do anything. So... Why, why can't really see much. I feel like it's worth downloading this to like play around. Toggle physics. Can I, oh, come on. Can I just, ooh, oh. Oh, no. Stop. That's, oh, I don't know the controls. I'm doing something. I, that's so cool. Oh, this is albumin, okay. HDL, IG, IgG, so here's some uh, antibodies. Perfect. Just like it is in, in a cell, I guess. Exterior, oh. Create ingredient. This is almost like a game. Endoplasmic reticulum, mRNA. Oh, mRNA vaccine. That's cool. So we can do a vaccine membrane. Oh, that's so cool. It automatically like shifts for you. And I pressed the wrong button. Well, my vaccine has a hole in it. That's okay. Cholesterol, oh, cool. RNA? Oh, look at all this RNA. All right, cool. So, oh, there's a tutorial, nice. The web version, you can download a standalone version from SourceForge. Actively looking for people to test the program, share what they created and give us feedback. There you go, if anyone has some free time and wanna play around with it. Or if you have a team of high schoolers and wanna give them a, a project to do or something like that. Let's see. David, I do not understand your WWE reference. I do not know anything about WWE, unfortunately. All right, what are we talking about? You should have your kids build a prokaryote and a eukaryote with this when they review for finals. That's not a bad idea. You might have to do some like curation of going in and finding all the components that they need and just telling them where they are so they don't have to like click through it. But that's cool. That'd be really cool. I mean, I might use this for my own class, come to think of it. There is a paper associated with it. See, I just wish I was good enough to do stuff like this. The uh, Just the insane amount of research. Like first you have to find the, the what the protein generally looks like figure out how to make it flat and figure out how it fits in with everything else. Insane. So cool. 
You gotta refresh your super lag. Well, it might be me. I hope not. I closed what I closed the thing that should be the uh, you know the major problem. Can I say what kind of class I teach? Is it university level? Yeah, it is university level. So the class I'm teaching this particular semester is an advanced molecular biology course. Um, so right now we're in the molecular biology portion of it where basically my students, they're having to learn or review all the fundamentals, you know, DNA stuff, RNA stuff, protein stuff, enzyme stuff. We're doing that all in the first month. Um, and then we are going to be moving into biotechnology, uh, gene editing, genomics, that sort of thing. And then they'll actually be doing some real um, bioinformatic work. So it's, it's hands-on science, um, but we don't need like test tubes and pipettes and that sort of thing. Just need a laptop, which is uh, why that particular project, which I did not start, I'm just now a part of it, is uh, pretty cool. Look at this Pac-Man. Well, look at this. Last semester I taught intro bio at a college level course. Seems like I do a lot, teach, research, stream. Yeah, and I wish I had more time for all of it. Yeah, no, um, I like keeping busy. Uh, and that's sort of the reason why I only stream for like four hours total a week. Cause it's like, oh, I'm looking at the times like I'll have to teach tomorrow. I was late from lab today. I wish I had more time. The other thing is I, I sleep like eight or nine hours every night. I wish I was one of those people who could survive on like fractions of a night's sleep, but I can't. I need my, I need my sleep. Can you join my course? Uh, <laughs> I would absolutely, but I don't think you live on the same continent as me, right? Um, yeah, no, this, this course, I actually kind of hope that I can maybe like keep it with me and like deploy it. It's first, first time. So hopefully my students haven't really noticed that every time I give a lecture or we do an activity, it's the first time that activity or lecture has been spoken out loud. They're great though. They're a great bunch. Um, they're dealing with the eccentricities of like a new course very, very well. You wish you could make four copies of yourself? Yeah. Same, same. That I think four is the minimum to do all the things that I want to do. I also just want to sit down and play video games. I'm hesitant to, but I feel like I should just play video games on stream sometimes. But it's less sciencey, unless it was fold it. Can I download this quick? I can. Um, am I an educator? Click here. Yeah. So last last time. I, uh, or last semester, I taught intro bio for, for um, this university. And I had a, you know, it's a small university, so very small classes. Like max, like I had 13 students last semester. Um, but only like one was uh, a major, or maybe it was two. So I had a lot of people who did not care. They could not like give a shit about Molecular biology, ecology, evolution, they did not care. You need to make me a game. Make me a game. Please make me a game. My, my top three games, someone literally just asked me this. Right now, it's Minecraft because I've been addicted to Minecraft since 2010. Valheim. Mostly because I got the itch to play again and started playing. And then I'm not sure. Flick Bibites, but with my face on it. <laughs> yeah, actually, Bibites is a lot of fun, too. I could pull that up. I haven't pulled up Bibites in a while. All right, I'm going to download this. It can't possibly be too big. Ew. That's not awful. You get a lot of, why am I here in high school? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I the, the problem is in the United States, at least, just all Mr. Rizzo, because I know that you are also in the United States. The problem is I don't, I don't think we focus enough on, like, 
buy-in, which is kind of a weird thing to focus on. Um, but buy-in, i.e. The, the, the point where you, a discussion between educator and student, where you're like basically convincing them that this is important and they say like, yes, it is important and now I'm interested. Uh, we don't really do that very well. Um, or if we do do it, it's mostly to the students who are already probably gonna be do like fairly well in school anyways. Um, yeah. <laughs> They're like, why is this crazy lady standing on a chair? <laughs> so excited uh, to talk about the electron transport chain. I do wanna know why you were on a chair. Uh, you have to develop a strategy, uh, like take a study and research the terms you don't already know. Wait, did I miss something? Ah, yeah, yeah, I see. Um, yeah, if you ever want to, I mean, David, you're you're one of the best people on Discord who is just like not afraid to ask questions. So that's a good way to learn. Yeah, you finally downloaded Bibites last week. You're not the right person for it because you keep alive the ones that are too slow to keep themselves alive. Oh, I do that a little too. Oh, it is a big push in public education. That's that's good. Because um, I'm seeing a lot of students who don't really have that buy-in yet. Um, let's see. Uh, does every teacher do it? Uh, I mean, like, oh. Sorry. I don't know what you just saw. That was folded announcing that it would like to install itself now. This is a, yeah, yeah, this is a trustworthy website. Go ahead and install. My poor computer. Um, yeah, does every teacher do it? No, absolutely not. Um, uh, like, at least as far as I am experienced in. Um, mm, like, I feel like I'm probably the only person in our department this semester who has at least some component of like, hey, here's a contract or here's some terms and conditions for lack of a better word. And we talk about it and we like come to an agreement about like, okay, this is what we're going to learn. And this is what you're going to get if you accomplish these goals. Uh, Twitch guy, you like to, you play weird strategy games. Your current game is called Distant Worlds Universe. It's like playing Star Trek. Uh-oh. Gonna have to write that down. If I write that down, I mean search it right now. Oh, you're short and drawing a picture on the board. I see. Oh. <laughs> All we saw was your browser disappearing for a second. Okay. I saw the entire screen just going that like sort of like windows faded like, hello, answer this question for me. Okay, fold it is apparently done. All the gamers in the room immediately hit Google. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're updating. Skip, not recommended. Let's do some fold it. There might be a tutorial. Um, also, yeah, I, I should play more like biology e games every once in a while. But I've had too much fun on the microscope lately, so I haven't had a chance. Bibites was a lot of fun. Manigard, you turned me on to that like other evolution game. I have it downloaded. I have not finished the tutorial. I really want to give that a try. FYI. Uh, GOG has some great Star Trek games like Bridge Commander. Bridge Commander is that the is that the like VR one? Oh, I don't recognize this. Oh, thank you. I'm talking too much. Wow. This looks wonderful. I'll definitely plug. Oh, God. What's that sound coming from? Oh, it's folded. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did everyone else hear that? I thought that was some sort of notification that like the community challenge was reached or something. I just heard a very, oh. 
Okay, sorry. Anyways, I got distracted by sounds. Yeah, no, I see it now. I love sort of like more classic games like this. I'll definitely check that out. Same thing with distant uh, worlds. I see, I see that by the pictures, I can tell it's something that I think I would like, that I should at least try out. Okay, let's, uh... <laughs> Where's that sound coming from is your whole life with like a hundred tabs open. Yeah, the worst is like the, uh, you know, the, the delayed one where you open a page and you don't know, but there's actually an automatic video that's going to play in like 15 seconds. And then you, by then you've already clicked off onto another one and you're left trudging through your tabs just to find it. All right. Click. All right. Um, Okay, I think we're gonna have to, well, this is fine, this is fine. I don't wanna use my like game window thing right now. Play, play online? Play online. I do not, yes, yes. Services and, yep, I read that. You're using fold it for education. This turns off non, no. Campaign? All right. I guess we're gonna start with the campaign. Campaign mode. I hope this tells me how to play. Oh, oh. Welcome to fold it. Click on the fold it icon, yep. Drag side chains. Oh, oh. <laughs> Whoa. Foldtastic. Yeah, so these are, um, so this is like, uh, these are two different amino acids. You know, I really should know my amino acids better, but is this, tyrosine and this might be like one two is it isoleucine maybe so there's sterics involved so these things can flop around like this but you know they don't want to be too close to each other or you get a clash so you uh gotta move them out of the way how do i do the next one choose puzzle Choose puzzle. Small, oh. Okay, okay, okay. Click and drag the background to rotate your view. Q to center the protein. I kind of wish the background was white. Oh, congrats, thank you. All right, so we got a, uh, oh no, I think that's isoleucine. I should really know my protein structures more, but I kind of forget them and don't care. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, do you want to know more about the science behind the background? Background of what? Oh, sure. Proteins don't exist in a vacuum. They are surrounded by water. For simplicity, we don't show it in folded, but you can imagine water molecules filling the space around the protein. A water-based aqueous environment is essential for protein folding. True, in other environments like ethanol or oil, the protein would unfold. Uh, as Shrek could tell you, tyrosine is now dead to me. Why is tyrosine dead to you? Have you been trying to mutate something to a tyrosine only for it to like fail? Why has your friendship with tyrosine ended? Okay, I'm gonna, oh, oh, look at the confirmations you can go through. So um, there are height, <laughs> look at it dance. Oh, Wraith, hold on. Look at that. All right. Um, uh, go back to that, actually that. Yeah, so, um, there are hydrogens that you don't see and that kind of like 
pinches, like the way that these different bonds can uh, uh, sort of rotate. So that's why they look like they're at a specific angle, and that's because they are, because on the invisible part, like right here, there's hydrogens keeping it from going in a perfectly straight line. You spent 6.5 years studying a single tyrosine and today's lab meeting melted all your neurons. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I, I, I hope your neurons uh, congeal, repolymerize something. Right, hold on, I gotta fix this steric clash. A great title for your memoir <laughs> or a t-shirt. Yeah, actually, like, you know, for your eventual defense, have a t-shirt that says, like, I spent 6.5 years studying a single tyrosine, and all I got was this dumb t-shirt. You've earned a shake tool. You can use the shake to fix clashes for you. So I, oh, do you want to know more about the science of the shake tool? No, thank you. No, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, so um, I think the point of this project is kind of like community science. I think I, at some point you begin to actually help them uh, discover how to minimize clashes between uh, these proteins or, or, or amino acids in these proteins. So rather than predict the structure, get over here. Um, you are kind of like helping solve the structure because I think it's pretty yeah I think it's pretty easy to like tell whether or not you have a steric clash I think what's more difficult is understanding whether everything is the in the best confirmation okay why is my score bad plus 25 I gotta I gotta make sure they're not clashing no, no, no. 17. Why is that worse? Whoa. You're making these worse. All right, they want me to use the shake tool. Oh, <sighs> okay. Well, I didn't know I could do the blue ones too. That was unclear. Oh, stop, stop. Great, I cheated. Fantastic. Backbones collide. Uh-oh. Oh, no. The backbones. This is the backbone of the protein. Clashes can also appear when the backbone atoms are too close together. Click and drag the backbone to pull apart. Don't pull too much. The protein still needs to be neatly folded. Uh, do you want to know more about the science of the protein backbone? I know, thanks. You can always undo. All right, so I want to move this segment. Yeah. Oh. And then not many confirmations on this one. Unless I do that. And then this maybe... Trying to find where this, you could come over here. There we go. Nice. So that last one that I pulled off, I was kind of maximizing the space because you know they were pulling over here, but these amino acids were already kind of occupying that. I saw this empty space. Wait, what is the community challenge set at? Did we hit it? I gotta check. No, no, we didn't. 20,000. Okay, okay. You have 27 days to, to get the last 40%. Which hopefully will give me enough time to go out and find more cards. All right, I'm going to do one more. This is, I can see how this puzzle can get fun, but it's not scratching the itch that I have for certain types of puzzles. 
Although, yikes. There are... <laughs> there are a lot of things here. Wow. Oh boy. So other times the backbone is too far apart. Voids are an indicator of the empty space of empty space that needs to be filled. Do you want to know more about voids? No. Try to get rid of them by dragging the backbones together. It's not always possible to get rid of all of the voids. Huh. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong thing. Okay. Oh, oh. I was perfect for a second. Speed run, fold it. Oh. Ha, I tricked it. Wow, look at that score. Yeah, speed running, fold it any percent. Uh, speed run, fold it. Uh, I'm not really, I'm not seeing an actual speed run, like, like category four, fold it. What is the speed run? Is it speedrun.com? What's the speed run run f place? Search for games, fold it. No results. I could be the world record holder for fold it. But what would it be? Would it be uh would it be all the just all the puzzles? Because that's the campaign. What are science puzzles? There are no science puzzles. Okay. Yeah, I could do that. Alright, I think I'm done with this game. It's fun. Your current protein will be, well, hold on. I, I already, I finished this one. Does it not see, oh, it does. It knows that. I could be the number one folded streamer. Wow, it's everything I've ever wanted to be. Yes, I want to quit. There we go. I mean, I like speedruns, and I like, uh, <laughs> there are no puzzles in science, they've all been solved. I like speedruns, and I like, uh, you know, watching people play games, but is Fold It really that fun to watch? Really? Did people really have fun just now for those 15 minutes of me dragging a, something that looked like silly putty around until the game said it was good? That's an honest question. I'm searching, for, constantly searching for feedback. Okay, I'm gonna open up Bibbits, Bibbites, Bibbits. Which I think mine is outdated. The Bibbits. Between a folded streamer and an ASMR streamer, I think you could be a full-time Twitcher. I do have a new ch I do have a new com community reward that's uh, not community reward uh, point reward that's ASMR based. We are a special kind of people. True, but I have to you know I have to broaden my audience for the old for the sole reason that I want to unlock more uh, emote slots because I want to have more emotes. You know, although I really have fun talking. And I have fun chatting with you guys and I have fun like actually streaming and thinking about science. Really, in the back of my head, it's all about getting more emote slots. Honestly, I think it's a valid question for any game. Can people have fun watching? I guess the answer is yes, since Twitch exists. That's true, but um, what I'm think what I my hypothesis is, is that we can plot you know, the various aspects of a game. I don't know what those as aspects would be. It's like an n-dimensional plot of the various things that you might want in like a, a, a game and a, like a, a Twitch stream for a game. 
I would posit that at some point you reach a threshold where it's so boring and so simple that no one would want to watch it, right? I'm just wondering what that line is. Bibbits. Look at my bibbits. Okay. I gotta I gotta resize this. There you go. You think that's an honorable goal, especially with your emotes, you have the best ones. Oh, thank you. I'm not gonna say it, but I subbed for the tardigrade emotes, <laughs> but it helped. <laughs> uh, I can only take partial credit for some of the emotes. Um, a good portion of them were, and the base were created by my artist friends. Okay, I gotta start a simulation first. Um, we're just gonna start a normal simulation. Then I'll load in my favorite bibbits. Um, yeah, no. Uh, so I have to stream like 60 days in order to, oh. Okay. Hold on. Let me finish my thought and I just saw what you did, uh, Brian. Um, I have to stream for 60 days, which I'm like 40-ish, to unlock free emotes, which I really want because I hate that people have to buy, like subscribe, even though I appreciate it. I hate that you have to subscribe to be able to use the emotes. And then, but then the other thing is if I get enough people subscribing simultaneously, that opens up more subscription emotes and more uh, uh, animated emotes. Animated, definitely. Yeah, as a streamer, you get rewarded for having more people, not just by like just the general, where's he going? Not just by the general uh, money aspect of it, which isn't that much and I don't care about personally, but you get uh, emotes opening up. Am I aware that there are streeps, sleep streams on Twitch? Absolutely. Have to take that into account when thinking about how boring a stream has to be for people to stop watching. <laughs> this is true. That's true. I know, and I feel like it kind of came and went, but the era of the uh, the hot tub or the bathtub stream, uh, I don't think I have the, the body for that. Yeah, we all love emotes here. Those of us who can sub are contributing to the future experience of those who cannot, and you're good with that. That's awesome, that's a nice way to uh, think about it. Oh, you make ASMR videos? I did not know that. Feel free to share sometime. Okay, Brian, let me see what you... <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is um this is the this is the paper that our wonderful mod just sent us. Um Brian, do you, do you really want me to do this? You redeem the points. I will what did I even say in the reward? I've not had enough time to even like let it sort of sink in what I agreed to. Channel points. Channel points, channel points. Um, you know, I thought I sent that up high enough, but I forget that since I didn't really have usable rewards for a long time, that people just racked them up. I'll read the abstract and introduction on stream in my best audiobook voice. No promises. At least I said that. Not going to do it if we have a guest stream. All right. All right. Um, let's see. Wait, why does this game have spaceships? Hold, uh, this is called Bibites, the Bibites. Oh, he just died. It's an evolution simulator game. Um, oh, hey, other Marcus is here. Welcome. Your, your Evo psych detector just went off. And no, I don't have to do it. Okay, well. <laughs> Why did I feel that would summon you? Okay, okay. Um, multiple things are going on. We have way too many things happening. <laughs> Marcus was summoned by a sussy paper. That is, that that appears to be true. I, I support that hypothesis. 
Uh, where'd that go? All these games you're linking me to. Speedrunning, fold it. Yeah, what's up, Marcus? How's it going? Welcome. Yeah, the ovulatory cycle affects on tip earnings by lap dancers. Economic evidence for human estrus. Estrus? Uh, oh no, I don't have access to the full paper. I guess we'll just have to do this later. Um, I'll read the abstract at least in my best, in my best um, uh, audiobook voice. I kind of have to get in the mood because like this is like, I don't call it my audiobook voice, but I call it my presenter voice. It's the thing that my brain does automatically when I give a, a presentation. Uh, let's see. And, um, oh, you're not working for once because Ginios, Ginius? How do you pronounce that? That's the, uh, that's the vac the smallpox vaccine or the monkeypox vaccine? The, like, whichever one it's specific to. You got it for monkeypox. Well, that sucks. I thought you got that a while ago, or were you just talking about it? Or is there multiple doses? I guess I know nothing about the vaccine. Okay. Yeah, I hope you feel better. Okay, let me see if I can do this on command. I don't know if I'll be able to. So, the ovulatory cycle effects on tip earnings by lap dancers. Economic evidence for human estrus. To see whether estrus was really lost during human evolution, as researchers often claim, we examined ovulatory cycle effects on tip earnings by professional lap dancers working in gentlemen's clubs. 18 dancers recorded their menstrual periods, work shifts, and tip earnings for 60 days on a study website. A mixed model analysis of 296 work shifts representing about 5,300 lap dances showed an interaction between cycle phase and hormonal contraception use. Normally cycling participants earned about US $335 per five hour shift during estrus, US $260 per shift during luteal phase, and $185 per shift during menstruation. By contrast, patients using contraceptive pills showed no estrus during peak. These results constitute the first direct economic evidence for the existence and importance of estrus in contemporary human females in a real-world work setting. These results have clear implications for human evolution, sexuality, and economics. There we go, and I don't have rest, access to the rest of it. Um, oh, we're talking about... Uh, let's see... What are you talking about here? Let me join the voice chat if you want it to be really dramatic. Uh, second dose, and yeah, it's the smallpox vaccine that cross react from monkey bites. All right. Um, so on and off symptoms, I assume. Didn't take until today. It's 100% not a dud. You have most of the, the most common symptoms. That's good to know. See, I haven't really considered getting the vaccine yet. Uh, please narrate my life. I need either you or Morgan Freeman to do this, and I only have access to you. Well, you do just have access to me, so I don't know. I don't know how to monopolize on that. So, you know, give me something. I'll read it. Also, Joffrey Miller, if you recall, is a lunatic. Oh, really? All right. Well, we might as well look him up. Also, I wanted to say, David, we were going to talk about uh, uh, H-E-R-V-K, but we have gotten so sidetracked that it's probably not worth it for tonight because I need to get it to bed at a normal time today. But I promise we can talk about that both off, off stream and later on stream if you just remind me again. Um, and you've also got headache, fatigue, nausea, and all the injection site side effects worse than the COVID vaccine ever will. Ew, yikes. 
How many channel points would you charge for a life narration? You'd cash in on some of that. Life narration. Life narration. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Like, it depends on what it is. If it's a, uh, if it's like a script you sent me, depending on the length. Um, if it was like more than, if it was like more than what, then, sorry. If it took me more than like 10 minutes, the cost would be gifting a sub to someone else. That's the only time a monetary cost would be in. But you know, I'd, I'd read something for a reasonable number of, uh, uh, chat points, maybe like 10 to 20,000, you know, the upper range, but not like impossible. Um, uh oh, is that a tweet? Dear obese PhD applicants, if you don't have the willpower to stop eating carbs, you won't have the willpower to do a dissertation. Hashtag truth. Joffrey Miller. Oh, no, I could set a time limit. That's a good idea. I think I started something here with the narrating. You really did. Oh, my gosh. Let's do 10,000 per like, I don't know what how many words is this? I can't I don't I don't have a good sense for that like 200 words I don't want it to get too crazy okay um we gotta look up Joffrey Miller oh no oh no he oh he looks like a dweeb who would have bad opinions okay it, okay okay yikes um, now I actually do want to look into this paper. Let's see, he, he's the first author on this, although he's the corresponding author. So, Albuquerque, I was just there. I should have go, gone and said hello. What does he do? Let's see. Um, oh, thank you, Marcus, for contributing to the packs of cards. Another good Miller tweet. Yikes. Oh, no. <laughs> Remember, kids, the implicit goal of Hollywood's origin stories featuring evil characters is to reinforce the blank slate myth that all evil results from early traumas, social oppression, and toxic ideologies not from any evolutionary slash genetic influences. <laughs> Joffrey Miller enraged watching the Joker while he uses Plink to, to run a GWAS on being evil to show those foolish Hollywood blank slatists. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. Who am I kidding? Joff can't. Jeff? Jeff? Joff? I'm going to say Joff. Uh, or Goff. I know a Goff who spells his name like this. Can't do actual science. Oh, come on. He uses his sassy cafe picture as his professor picture. Oh, no. Personal web page. Yes, please. What's me? Oh, ew. Ew. Okay, good. His podcast, The Mating Grounds, apparently doesn't exist as a website. Do I have do I have an interest in crazy people? I have an interest in in crazy science people. Did you miss did you miss when we read about the 12 DNA harmonics and psychic cosmic energies? You might have missed that particular stream, but I yes. The answer is yes. Um Oh boy. Ooh, oh no. Essays on essays on Darwinian politics and free speech. Virtue signaling. N none of these. None of oh, here it is from Apple Podcasts. None of these are a good sign. He has a CV. Um, okay, this is, okay, good. This is long, long gone, sounds like.
Yeah, okay. Well. <laughs> Put him in a room with Brett autoerotic asphyxiation has an evolutionary purpose, Weinstein. Oh, I wish I could. Oh, he does private coaching? Can we crowdfund some private coaching? Actually, no. Don't bother. Um, at least the 12-strand crystal sphere... Wait, 12-strand DNA crystal sphere lady seemed nice. Yeah, she seemed nice enough. Yeah, this guy seems icky. You know what I mean? Like, he has that... Like, already, I can just tell he's that air about him. Um, let's look at his apparently out-of-date CV, though, that comes as a Word document that hopefully won't give my computer a virus. Can I can I show his... Okay, I feel like I should just, like, say, like, please don't dox, dox this man? I don't know. It's not doxing. His phone number was on there, but he has it freely available. Uh, you have to bounce, but we want to thank the chat. Uh, for anyone who checked out your fan fiction, yeah, uh, there were more hits last week than the previous two months. Awesome, I'm very happy about that. Um, by the way, Benjamin, your stream was also the uh, the like most viewed stream post stream time. Uh, so congratulations on that. Uh, Twelve strand DNA. Okay, we're we're gonna have to go back to the 12 strand DNA. See, I knew this, I knew this stream was going to be a rabbit hole stream. And I'm 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 here for it. Uh, I just wanna I gotta focus. I gotta look at this man's CV and then we're gonna go to the 12 strand DNA lady. Okay, what's he doing? He is a professor, he was a, a research scientist, postdoc. Yep, yep, yep. He got he got his PhD from Stanford. The evolution of the human brain through through runaway sexual selection. Runaway sexual selection. All right. Well, we're gonna copy that because uh, I do want to find a copy of that that thesis. Um, interests. Ew. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's worth putting your H index on your CV. Um, hit, wait, hold on. Oh, here you go, David. There's Italian books uh, possible that you can read. Di Sexuella Evolution. Is that how you pronounce it? Evolution. Patnoval und die Entstellung des Geistes. Uh, partner choice and the something of spirit. I don't know. Um, why is his CV 27 pages long? Oh, oh, hold on. Why is intelligence correlated with semen quality? Biochemical pathways common to sperm and neuron function and their vulnerability to pleiotropic mutations. Okay. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. I need like a, I need like a cold compress or something. <laughs> okay. Let us quickly. Quick shout out, secondary literature. Quick shout out to the, to the magiccrystalorchestra.com. This this is the 12 strand DNA thingy. Ascension through the music of the universe. Something about 12, 12 strand DNA. I don't really know. Um, meet all the notes of Gaia's soul and 12 race lines, yikes, who have landed on Earth in this book. It is insane. Go read it. It's on secondary literature. Uh, yes, yeah, Sussy is right. Um, Oh, hello, Dracula. Welcome, welcome. And no, I'm never leaving a rabbit hole. I forgot to make a rabbit hole counter. But who am I kidding? I don't have, I didn't have time. Also, my bibites are evolving in the background and I've ignored them. Okay, okay. I'm over, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Okay, cow heaven. I'm loading up cow heaven because I want my cows to evolve. 
These are what I call my cows. They're slow moving, large, energy dense uh, 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 bibites. They live forever and I'm evolving them to be, to be the food for predators. Okay, those are gonna go off in the background. I really need to turn down the time. There we go. Uh, enjoy the story of how my husband and I actually ascended into the veil simultaneously as one soul. Yeah, exactly. But hold on. Um, this is, where did it go? Where did his CV go? I need to find this paper right now. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Why is intelligence correlated with semen quality? 12 citations, thank you. Ew, he put, he put the number of citations per paper in his CV. Like, who does that? Actually, someone who has a podcast called The Mating Ground does that. That's who does that. All right. Uh, you've been playing Bibites since your last stream. Mine look nothing like those. Uh, yeah, because um, these, these um, yeah, they've been going for about 26 hours, and I sort of, like, fiddled with them a little bit. So there's another program you can... So I like their, their initial state I set completely and basically let them sort of evolve into a niche, like kind of settle out from that sort of initial like instability. All right, I got to find this. Wait, I already searched for this paper. Okay, we're, we're done with PDB. We're done with HIV. We're done with Foldit. Uh, I didn't get to talk about Alpha Fold. Good sell, good buy. It's cited by 20. He should really should update his CV. Okay, we recently found positive correlations between human general intelligence. Yikes. Human general intelligence and three key indices of semen quality. Alt Miss Frizzle, you've worked with um, uh, like cattle, like semen something or other, like we're breeding or something like that, or insemination. You have some background in this. Could you, I'm just curious, do you know what the three indices of semen quality are and can you write them down? I just wanna know if whenever I find those, if they're the same. Um, what do their brains look like? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's look at their brains quick. For a second, I thought you meant maybe that man. Uh, so they are, so they constantly go forward and they are constantly having a negative amount of digestion. Um, except their fullness turns on their digestion. And then they have a, this sort of weird neuron thing where they rotate generally towards plants. And then they also rotate towards higher numbers of plants. That little bit has been uh, really helpful for them. Anyways, that's what their brains look like. Uh, some get a little bit more complicated. I just don't know what they necessarily do. Yeah, I guess this one is accelerating towards, well, nothing. It's just accelerating. Um, you want to hear my opinion on AlphaFold? Uh, I like it, except that like these fancy pictures that they show kind of ignore, not ignore. So this is fly based. This is where all fly drosophilists, fly scientists like come. But if you go to any other protein, Actually, set eight might not have been a good one. We'll check. If you go to any other protein and look at the, they just stuck in an alpha fold module into each of these sort of gene reports. Is it even gonna load for me? Gene model? Show me, show me the structure. And of course it's not gonna work. It, it just looks like a rat's nest, basically. Um, oh, Miller is cited on Wikipedia page for semen quality. Oh boy. Marcus, what did you... What do you got here? <laughs> oh no, the life of Joffrey Miller, three parts. All right. Funny how these less politically correct behavioral science Oh wait, no, funny how the less politically correct, the behavioral science, the less of the replication crisis it faced, IQ research, behavioral genetics, and evolutionary psych, 
are doing just fine. Thanks for asking. Next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, what? We conducted a conceptual replication of one study, found no statistically significant relationship between intelligence and ejaculate quality. Uh, I assume this is someone else's. Basically refuting his his this paper. Yeah, he's kind of a gold mine. I mean, his CV. Is just seems like it might be a list of like questionable things. Um, yikes. Waking up when I'm this sighted. The neurodiversity case for free speech. Mental health in air in quotes disabilities as legal superpower. Is that what that said? Ugh, yikes. That doesn't sound good. It's all his talks. This man needs to take a lesson on CV writing. Uh, oh, you responded to me, the Altmus result. Uh, motility, concentration, and how structurally intact the head and tail are. That makes sense. Uh, anecdotally, some dumbass pigs have some dumbass pigs have functional sperm. Uh, and you've seen pictures of sperm that have multiple heads or tails. It was pretty wild. Yeah, um, I actually don't really know why, like, so many, like, bad... I don't really understand, um, or I shouldn't say I don't understand. I'm not familiar with spermatogenesis, uh, especially in, like, humans or in mammals generally. I don't understand why uh, sperm that are misshapen survive. I, I guess if there's just no evolutionary mechanism evolved to kind of rid those from like the sperm population, I guess it would make sense because if they're less likely to compete with other sperm, then I guess it doesn't really matter if they're there or they're not. I don't really know. Um, Spermatogenesis is so cool. It's one of your favorite things. Awesome. Maybe you can teach us about it sometime. Okay. I am looking at this guy's thing, though. I just want to find... Okay. So they focus on especially in the interrelated roles of polyunsaturated fats, exocytosis, and receptor signaling. Um, in a recent paper, I thought this was the paper, they, po they report a positive association between general intelligence and semen quality in male humans. Specifically, in samples of Vietnam-era uh, veterans. Okay, so they have a G factor representing general intelligence. Okay, I'm, I'm just always, I, just always very skeptical of, even if you say it's a well-validated cognitive test. Oh, concentration, count, and motility. Okay, so those are what um, they say they are. Uh, because of factors like retrograde loss in the reproductive tract, those sperm will all be weeded out in theory anyways. Yeah, so like the, there's like not evolutionary pressure in the way that I'm thinking of it because they already are selected against. <laughs> in, in other words, vaginas are amazing and will uh, get rid of the bad sperm for you. Fair enough. All right. From an adaptationist viewpoint, there's little reason to expect a correlation in functional efficiency between uh, two such disparate traits. Intelligence depends brainly, mainly on brain function and neural development, whereas semen quality depends mainly on testicular function and spermatogenesis. Nonetheless, while we hypothesize that there may be pervasive positive correlations among the functional efficiencies of many organ systems because different organs are influenced by overlapping sets of genes. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay. Okay, in that paper, they did not explore specific biochemical pathways. That's where I feel like I can come in. Blah, 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 blah. They focused especially on the roles of polyunsaturated fats, exocytosis, and receptor signaling. Okay. So that other paper... Oh. 
Uh, you're currently skimming the title, paper titled, oh, his paper titled, Humor Ability Reveals Intelligence, Predicts Mating Success, and is higher in males. See, it sounds like he'd write a paper that said, like, uh, you know, a Bayesian analysis determines that men named Joffrey have higher success with women, or something like that. It sounds like, I don't know. He's... He's putting something in his coffee or something like that. Um, you found a PDF of this guy's latest book. It's literally over 400 pages of him saying that humans had sex to make more humans. What a, what a novel thought. He's writing scientific clickbait. He's writing um, like, like, what, like Gamergate red pilled anti Me Too scientific clickbait or something like that i don't really know what group of adjectives to put together <laughs> shocking news that scientists are stunned to discover <laughs> uh what i i bet this man has very interesting like thoughts on um non-heterosexual relationships and i bet he's the type of person that you know you you politely talk to at a bar or whatever and then he says something and you just have to go like huh okay anyways regarding semen a substantial literature describes tight genetic regulation of sperm metabolism of polyunsaturated fatty acids during spermatogenesis, with stage-specific differences in lipid metabolism likely driving the morphological and functional changes as the immature germ cells become mature spermatozoa. Cool. Uh, um, oh, oh. Hmm, what? DHA. I forget what DHA stood for. DHA, DHA, DHA. Maybe he didn't say. Yeah, interesting. And thoughts. <laughs> I am being a little charitable. I mean, I don't want to be like mean, but you could, you clearly could hear the quotes I was putting about him. I feel like he'd be the kind of guy one would be afraid to hand a microphone. Yeah, or like at the, uh, you know, at the conference that everyone goes to, you know, you, um, like, you know, during every time there's a question, like time for questions, he's the one that when he stands up and goes to the microphone, all the younger grad students go like, uh, and they kind of like tune out for a couple seconds. Um, oh, I passed it. I passed it. I'm sure I passed it because I'm just zooming up and down. Um, okay, it's a specifically a long chain polyunsaturated fatty acid uh do docosa hexanoic acid yeah okay dha i see now why they say dha i think i would know because you have to have it when you're pregnant i see yeah yeah, yeah. so dha may also contribute to pi electrons wait contribute pi electrons to the membranous signal control of potential differences across the lipid bilayer with a quantum precision uniquely afforded by its symmetrical array of alkenyl groups like no offense but i don't think a psychologist is that what he calls himself what is he you know what part is he yeah i feel like a psychologist wouldn't really know that much about uh you know the 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 electrons in membranes but you know maybe i shouldn't judge maybe i shouldn't judge that because i don't know anything about that he did cite something did he cite himself uh nope it is there is a paper though okay so similarly sperm and retinal photos receptor cells in addition to having Oh, in addition to olfactory sensory neurons, seem to share functional similarities in employing cyclic nucleotide gated ion channels in response to chemotactic, photo photonic, and odorant signals, respectively. 
Um, I thought a lot of cells did that. Huh. I mean, I don't want to read any more of this. So this is the thing. Like, I feel like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Evo Science has no place talking about electrons. Absolutely not. Um, I'm even a little suspicious about, you know, gated ion channels. I mean, I think they're picking and choosing. Like, okay, I believe it that certain, that, that sperm and where did they, where did they even go? Uh, certain other receptor cells. Yeah, and so neurons share the, the, the use of these, these voltage gated uh, calcium ion channels. But I bet a bunch of other cells do. And they're not actually showing any data, right? I'm not seeing any data. I guess this is an addendum to something else. Are there data here? Okay, I think I just missed the actual paper. Whatever. So this is just more explanation. I, I, I just feel like the, there's a, the fundamental problem of like correlating a certain set of genetic factors positively to intelligence. Something is definitely, even if it is related to intelligence because it's an aspect of biology. So of course there are going to be genes that contribute to intelligence as a broad category, but to like try and fine tune the like particular snips that correlate to high intelligence is just a stupid exercise. I bet intelligence is more related to something like how much their parents talk to a child rel over like genetics in humans. A, as we talked about in the Discord, a highly or a lowly genetically diverse species. Um, yeah, sperm and neurons have similar aspects of the bio biology. Therefore, good sperm means neurons are also good. Is the f it, it is the fundamental argument of this. <laughs> they share proteins, but so does every other cell in the body. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. I mean... You have the problem of like, okay, how do you measure intelligence? Okay, great. And then how do you measure intelligence brought on by purely genetics versus literally everything else that affects um, aspects of our life, the phenotypic aspects of our life. Um, and three, I just don't believe that there's ever been any research that has shown beyond a doubt that there's even a correlative range of, of, of um, genotypes that then correlate to a intelligence phenotype. I'm pretty sure that just ends up ending up in some like very sticky arguments that don't go anywhere and are unfounded. Oh, this guy. I wanna see what's on the... My computer does not like his his CV. Oh, he uses the, the ash, the AE. Very cool. He's a super cool person that I bet is fun to talk to. Referent, referent, oh. Oh, I hope these people don't mind office, office, office. Okay, I guess, okay. Wait, 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 wait. He lists the Ig Nobel, wait, Ig Nobel Prize is the bad one, right? That's the one that where they're making fun of you for being dumb, right? Yeah, a satirical prize awarded for scientific achievements that make people laugh. Oh, and then make them think. Okay. Well, bold of him to put that under his professional recognitions, honors, etc. That's kind of funny. That's a little funny. That's a little bit of self-awareness. <laughs> you also don't like his CV. Oh, yeah, and 
they go to IQ testing and that's when all the racism and bigotry shows up. Yeah, strange. I would say that that scientific papers and scientific arguments in lots of air quotes um, that bring up IQ testing are more correlated with racism in subsequent arguments than IQ is to any sort of genetics that we've sort of discovered in terms of differences in populations and that sort of stuff. Again, it's that sort of fundamental thing where people just don't understand that like, okay, yes, there are certain genes that if you throw the whole thing out, your brain's not gonna develop. You're gonna have severe um, lack of like neuronal developments that lead to uh, differences in intelligence ability. Okay, of course, so therefore, uh, there's certain aspects of intelligence that are genetic, but not in the way that everyone wants to think that is, which is that like, oh, if I have an A here, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get into Harvard, but if I have a T there, I'm gonna get into, you know, community college or something like that. Uh, but whatever, uh, Coca-Cola. Oh, he consults with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola really needs to hear about how he's his smart sperm are superior to dumb sperm. Animal behavior? Anything that I'm a part of? No. He's not a part of the genetic society. Which is probably good. Uh-oh. UNM Committee on Sexual Harassment and Sexual Violence Policies. Uh, I know it's probably not true, but it would be funny if he was he was citing his own being recommended, like like uh, complained about as working on the committee. He's a Patreon too. All right, I do have to check out the Patreon. And an Instagram. Whatever. Oh. Uh, the Ig Nobel is how you found that abstract, which led us down the rabbit hole. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Coca-Cola has had has gotten in trouble for having problematic training practices more than once. So, so it makes sense that they hire a guy like this that guy. <laughs> you, you really, really hope this is the there aren't measurable quantities of semen in Coca-Cola. Uh, would you rather there be immeasurable quantities of semen in Coca-Cola? I don't really know. Um, yeah, you're the one who mentioned Fold It. Between the two of you, you really nuked today's stream. Uh, well, no, not really. Um, Look, look at the title, unless I forgot to update it. I didn't actually check. Did I forget to ch update the title? Uh, no, no, I said random science stream. That, let's go down the biology rabbit hole, or two, or eight, like we did. No, you contributed to st um, stream. Uh, wouldn't the phosphoric acid just degrade it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but does that make it better? Like, yeah. <laughs> Would, um, I mean, I'm okay. There's, there's, there's like everything else. There's probably a, a, a limit. There's a, there's a range. If you had an infinity number of different types of drinks put in front of you, and you were told like you have to drink all the ones you you have to drink at least one you can drink up to all of them which is infinity there is some com and but you but you know that each single one is not only a different drink but also has semen in it there is some category of drink that the average person will be like you know what i'll drink this even though i know it has semen in it because i have to do at least one i bet coca-cola would be one of the ones because you're right it would just kind of degrade everything that's a thought experiment i like to run on the general population your ninth graders may not know his fancy vocab but they could run circles around his logic yeah i, I bet 
I bet he hates, I bet he hates young people. Okay, my computer hates his CV so much. Whoa. Science streams just rating me with five viewers. Welcome, 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 everybody. Uh, you've caught you've caught me in a very uh, odd position. We were talking about a very strange person who has a fascination with uh, semen and intelligence, among other things. Uh, so, hello. Yeah, nice to meet you. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Maddie. Hello, Science Streams. Yeah, so you you caught us on sort of a random stream day. So normally on Wednesdays, I like to talk about science fiction and science. Sundays, um, we uh, go on the microscope. My name is Dr. N. But right now, we've just been going down the rabbit hole of various things. And we're talking about this guy, Jeffrey Miller, who I just am looking a little bit more, uh, looking up a little bit more. He has some strange ideas, I think is, is safe to say. To be fair, there has been some fiction in that science. Thank you, Maddie, for the follow. Uh, do I wanna see a rabbit hole? Maybe? Um, yeah, there has been a lot of fiction in this, this in air quotes, science. Um, I, oh, I lost his, I lost his, uh, yeah, this is what we're looking at. Intelligence and semen quality are positively correlated. I want to find that paper that is like, uh, no, it isn't. So, um, wait, R? Yeah, whatever. So let's see. Oh, rabbit hole. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, science has a rabbit hole emote. I'm jealous. I have one on Discord, but I don't have enough emote slots for one here. Uh, you remember there was a, this Pastor Manning uh, that held a famous speech about the ingredients in Starbucks latte. I feel like I know what you're talking about. Um, let's see. Everyone's just saying hi. Yeah, what a paper to rate into. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's why I said you, you. I feel like you came in with me in a very compromising situation. Uh, that's okay, though. That's okay. We just have gotten a little distracted. I mean, you can't just have this title without us checking it out. Um, yeah, this. so this guy, Joffrey Miller, let's just go to PubMed, because I do want to see some of his other ones, right? So what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Joffrey Miller. It's OK. You have forensic background. You've seen worse. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeffrey, wait, are these the same one? Okay, is he Jeffrey F? I'm guessing. <laughs> oh no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, a new research method using selection among 3D models, Jeffrey. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Wow, thank you to an anonymous uh, gifter, gifting tier one subs to Volcano Doc, Engineuber, Science Streams, Cliff, and Space Witch. Wow, thank you very much, anonymous gifter. So now uh, people can use um, emotes. People can spam emotes, because I'm not fancy enough to have free emotes. Yeah, whoever you are, thank you. Yes, but uh, who said it? Yeah, Jeffrey, yikes, yes. <laughs> Jeffrey, chill. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna click on one of these. I'm gonna click on all of these, maybe. Let's click on this one. What what breaks terms of service on Twitch? I'm trying to decide. Oh, <laughs> 
figure two, figure two, penile models, computer graphics, something, something, something. Uh, uh, yeah, they're tardigrades. Um, like, I don't have enough emote slots for the full body tardigrade that dances, but, you know, the little marching. Oh, come on, let me, let me, yeah, I know I'm subscribed to myself. Well, Marcus did a butthole science pleasure paper. <laughs> oh boy, Brian, what are you sending me now? Ah, thank you. Yes, this was the rebuttal. And yeah, of course, Marcus did. Uh, yeah, we're not really, we're not really, uh, I, I think it's safe to say, unless I'm unaware of other like science streamers, that we might be the only two Marcuses who are science streamers. And uh, I don't think we, well, certainly Marcus, you give you give science streamers a good name. But I think in, in, in combination, I think we tend to maybe give science streamers named Marcus sort of a bad reputation of certain things. There's a certain overlap of things we're interested in that maybe we shouldn't be interested in. Even in context, this is hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, um, okay. I want to look at his uh, women's size preferences. <laughs> Marcus, Marcus gang. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, If it's not clear, and if you don't follow him, you should definitely follow uh, Homozygote, aka Marcus, just spelled slightly different than I do. Random Venn diagram is random. Yeah. Oh, oh, I feel like we can read a lot into Jeffrey's life by the words in his, in his, um, you know, papers women's preferences for penis size may affect men's comfort with their own bodies and may have implications for sexual health because it's all about the men uh, <laughs> studies of women's penis size preferences typically have relied on their abstract ratings or selecting amongst 2d flaccid images I actually don't believe that. I took a human sexuality course in a, in college. I almost said high school. In college. And uh, the professor, she was awesome. And she was a psychologist. Um, and I do not think she would have been like, ooh, we have to do 2D flaccid images. I think they would have used fully turgid images. I think it means we have a problem. I agree. Yeah, this, he is, yeah, okay, it sounds like he's mansplaining um, women's preferences. Now, to be fair, he is the senior author on a paper with, uh, this Jamie does feel a little, um, you know, kind of a female, like, like a way a woman might spell her name female, so three, or might spell her name, so three women, but Jeffrey is the final say. I feel like I can read the parts that Jeffrey was like, oh, well, let's edit it this way. Um, let's see. Women recalled model size accurately using this method. Blah, blah, blah. Let's look at this. Huh? Oh, they produced the 3D models. I see. Oh, this might, you know, I have a 3D printer. We can, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say. We're not going to do anything with it. I feel like this was just an excuse to use software to model dicks. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Volcano Doc, welcome. I saw that you must have been lurking, uh, but welcome. Wait, you don't have a shout out. Uh, whoops, not at promo. There you go. Uh, I do wanna very quickly, let's just, I'm just gonna, Oop. Penis size reported to be average. Okay, don't know what that is. Is this 
error error in inches <laughs> oh i don't know what that means wait 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 i'm confused by what they're saying i think they're basically just saying that using a 3d printed model women are more accurate in estimating size this 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 all seems like it stemmed from a female partner of his misrepresenting what he what he uh, you know thought of as the size of his genitalia and he had to go and make a whole study about how women can't remember things or something like that what is even going on i good question i don't even know anymore yeah <laughs> penal model stream when uh right now apparently uh i wonder if they have okay i get the full free text i wonder if they i wonder if part of the like information if they give out the three models i mean they're not very detailed um why do why do they use a euphemism like they already said the word penis they, oh they just don't want to use the word penis twice in the same sentence that's that's funny so <laughs> oh, they provide a link to the models yes 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 uh-huh i can download these and i can print these why is the, I love how the nine is so much bigger. Okay, sorry, I'm missing things. You have, uh, thank you, uh, came back from dinner to a new stream. Yeah, um, yeah. Yikes, did he even account for girth? Yeah, there was, um, there was a axis, a girth axis on that. Um, this guy's Twitter is so stupid. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. Proving women are dumb to own his ex. That see, that's what this feels like. That's what this feels like is going on. I'm six inches, I swear. Miller has all his links on his personal website or his 27 page long uh, CV, which to be fair is a little out of date, but has everything prior to 2019. Like everything. Maybe it's all this extra detail that distracts from the size. Did you think of that, Joffrey? Um, this did actually get uh, published. Show me where on the science dildo where your penis falls. Uh, there's there's 53 files. Are you more of a model F or a model AA1? I'm actually just kind of confused. What's the difference? I I don't understand. Okay, first of all, like a grad student spent a long time making these. Second, they had to print a lot of these. There's a remix. Oh. Okay. Good job on this user. Um, uh, thinking of a better way to use this as a practice for using condoms. I bet that's good for students, like high school students. You can't believe this is real. <laughs> Your game is going to include these models? Well, I mean, yeah, if you need like, you know, game models, here they, here you are, they're free. What is this? It's like pop can sized. I don't know what to tell you. It's, we're, we're seeing the same things, but I think none of our brains are wrap, are able to wrap our minds around what is actually kind of going on. This is, it's the, yeah, it is a weird single peg Lego. Uh, okay, I'm closing that. Why am I on fly base? Um, semen quality, penis size, there was something else. <laughs> no, same thing. That was only the first thing. See, I was more afraid to click on this one because I just don't know what this will be. 
No, oh, no abstract. Too hot for PubMed. They had to censor it. Uh, oh, they won't let me in. And I will not accept your cookies. Huh, okay. Give me another paper. Give me another. You're laughing so hard your stomach hurts. This is the wildest rabbit hole yet. We, we, do you remember where we started? We started off by looking at 3D models. I have my poor Bibites evolving in the background. And CVI after dark. <laughs> my poor Bibites. I'm using some precious RAM that they could be using to like evolve on Jeffrey Miller's weird like trolling of his exes. Um, we started, we did start with protein structures and we came back to structures in, in a certain way. Uh, there's a lot of Jeffrey Miller's though. Like, I feel like he's, uh, uh, sexual selection for moral virtues. See, that sounds like a dog whistle for like, oh, some people don't have the same morals that we have. Telephone cords. Exactly. We did start with that. Oh, I did invoke David Goodsell's name in the same stream as Jeffrey Miller. Who, who told me about Jeffrey Miller? Whose fault was this? I'm scrolling through chat because I forgot. Um, he seems to have sussy papers in the autism epidemic. Ooh, yikes. Do I want to? Um, oh. Wait. Th this, these quotes scare me. Oh, Brian, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so very bro science. Yep, sure is. Um, yeah. See, I'm not qualified to really talk about like psychology, but I do worry. See, this sounds, this all sounds like it's gonna be a dog whistle for like, actually, I think autism isn't as widespread as we think or something. And those people are just mooching off of the government or something like that. Maybe, maybe. I, I, I'm going off of that because I did want to do one thing. I just wanted to go ahead and, and search this. Just to want to see how many there are. Okay. Okay. Not as many as I thought. Low fitness is super sketchy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm just trying to get a little sense for uh, his interests. He does have a wide range of interests. Uh, this paper claimed everyone would be uh, would become autistic and the entire economy would collapse because it's a social contagion, according to them, when it's not. I think you, so like the dog whistle of social contagion, meaning it's like kids these days and their fad um, mental disorders or neurodivergent uh, or neurodivergency is probably the much much better way of saying it the best way to check it out is check out the rebuttals I'll, I'll do that and also yes i did search this let's check the rebuttals um let's see comment in is this his nope so there's a letter about this See, I might just not gonna have. Hmm. I'm gonna have problems with the full text, unfortunately. Um, low fitness has a lot of uh, historical connotations. Yeah, it really does. I feel like, and if he's as as cited and as as well written and well versed as he probably should be he should know that 
Interesting. This is an interesting person that I'm definitely gonna have to like look into more. Um, and I'm really sorry to have to shut us down when we're when we're very deep into a rabbit hole. But unfortunately, I have to go because I have to teach tomorrow, and I have to get to bed. Super unfortunate. But so I'm really sorry about that. I hate to cut it like short, but I gotta get to sleep. Um, we should put. We should come back to this guy though. Jeffrey Miller. Jeffrey Miller. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, uh, don't bother with the, yeah, the, the full text. Um, <laughs> Mom, I was just searching for science purposes only, I swear. And sleep stream? No, not tonight. Some other time. Yeah, I'm sorry everybody. I actually normally stop at 10, but you know, the raid and the talking about weird people, too excited. Yeah. Is next Wednesday a guest? I don't know yet. I'm actually trying to confirm that. Um, so next Wednesday is likely um, just going to be me. I'm trying to get a guest on um, who's going to talk to us about, with us, about um, interspecies mating between different alien species. So if if she can't make it on next Wednesday, uh, we should just do another rabbit hole stream. I think that'll be a good idea. So yeah, old Miss Frizzle, I'm giving you the uh, the the sacred task of reminding me of that, because also I actually won't be streaming on Sunday. I will be gone this weekend, um, so unfortunately I won't be able to stream. So the next time I'll be streaming is a week from now. So let's find someone to raid let's see anyone have a suggestion turtles are always on at this time they are perfect oh, Miller's been involved on papers with extraterrestrials hold on cancel raid oh hold on we're gonna leave on a cliffhanger then am I spelling this right Joffrey Miller extra Terrestrial. Oh my god. Let's get a shit. Uh oh. It's stuck. <laughs> it got stuck. <laughs> I'll just <laughs> that was supposed to go away too oops <laughs> look it's stuck I can't fix it while stream is going now no I actually got a little warning before I started stream that they was like hey it's kind of broke something's broken and I was like ah that's probably not important oh well Wait, who did that? Oh, Brian did that. No, no, no. Not Mana Guard. Yeah, to be fair, it is the perfect ending. Okay. Um, I did not find anything on Joffrey Miller Extraterrestrials. We will talk about that on Discord. Yeah, for any new people, there is a Discord. It's been linked to several times. If you want to join, Discord. But there you go. Yeah, Mana Guard is innocent. <laughs> Brian was the culprit. Um, okay. This is super fun, though. I need to find... Unless someone has um, suggestions on who to raid, I think we'll just go to Turtles and chill. Yeah, I think so, because i got to get going, so I can't even stay. So we will do that. So thank you for coming. I will see you Wednesday, probably for another rabbit hole stream. Um, but yeah. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a good week. Okay, and happy almost September. Have a great night. Bye.